Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Blue. This is episode 19. I am Miss Lot, Miss Blue Unique, and I'm on here every week with another shade of blue and a topic. I don't have a guest this week because this gets deep, and this is about me. So, today's shade of blue is called Maya Blue, and the topic will be your sacrifice. So, it's kind of weird because I really don't believe in what these people that I'm about to talk about did for sacrifice. But, you know, I, we don't always understand everything. But, you know, I surely don't believe in sacrificing a human being. But I want to give you some history and some background on Maya Blue. Maya Blue was a blue seen by the Maya people. Do you guys know who the Maya people is? The Maya people were indigenous people. Now, I looked up that term indigenous, indigenous, because that was on my birthday. <laughs> I kid you not. On my calendar, on my phone, indigenous people came up, said indigenous people day was October the 8th too. So I'm like, what is so I looked it up, not knowing that I was going to look up Maya people at a, at a different time. So when I looked up Maya people and it said they were indigenous people, I was like, oh, the people who kind of like have their own culture in a mix of other people. Like they live, they're, they're in a, a population, but they have like their own culture. Now, Mayas are some of these people and they are like in Mexico, Belize, um, Honduras, places like Guatemala, and a couple other places. But those are some of the uh, examples. That's where they are from. And uh, they have like their own cultures and different things that they believe in. Well, they don't do this no more. But years ago, like years ago, back in the 80 years, they uh, would look at the sky and see that the sky was a certain color blue, like azure. I did azure blue before, which is a clear blue without clouds. And it would look dry to them. So they would look at that sky, that dry blue sky, and they would um, think it's not going to rain. So that color blue that they seen was a blue that they end up creating and making this blue with some stuff they use which made it like last and durable and it's still a blue to this day that's weird and different so they would take that blue that they made and they would pick out a victim and paint that poor victim that color blue and then they would sacrifice them to this god that they rain god that they believed in which so they killed the person, cut their heart out with their heart still beating, and then they, they thought that that's why it's gonna rain. <laughs> but anyway, that's how you come up with Maya Blue. Ain't that something not to know all the times why we come up with the blue? And Maya Blue is used in a lot of pottery and stuff that you still see to this day, a lot of antique pottery and different things that you buy. It is maya blue colors because uh this maya blue was made with a certain um chemical and indigo to make it look really different and be used with pottery now most of the time their sacrifices i found out later was just painting pottery and sacrificing that to get some rain so good they stopped doing people so anyway the topic of today since we give you that background of Maya Blue and where it came from, is sacrifice. What are you going to sacrifice for the good of your people? Now, all of us should know that there's only one God. There ain't no all these other gods. There's one God um, that we should be giving ourselves totally be in a submission to God and being a better person in life. So my question to you is, what are you going to sacrifice to become a better person? To become a person that when you walk around in this 
world, in, in your community, in your home, in your schools, your job, what are you going to sacrifice? What are you going to do without so that you could be a better person? What are you willing to do without? Well, me, uh, it's funny because I am a hairdresser and I, all I thought about was hair, hair, hair. And hair, man, dealing with these women and their hair can make you not ever want to touch anybody's hair again sometimes. But God gave me the gift to do hair. Um, as you can see, my hair is covered. As a um, Muslim culture where this is... Um, covering your hair to be less luck to keep you know the world from being as lustful men when you go out and about and be closer to God now I don't know everything I'm not perfect but I think that's sometimes the reason we don't do things that we feel for the first time in my life I feel good and I feel right and um I feel this is right, it makes me feel great, but because you have to go through so many things, you may stumble, you may wonder, because let me tell you my story. I put, you know, cover my hair and I went out and I go around people and some people just wouldn't speak to me like they normally did, you know? Look, I went in one particular store and man, it was just so many people like they don't want to speak to me. I even had a couple people ask me, are you one of those Muslim ladies? <laughs> yeah, that's how I was treated. I, I really don't understand, but yes, I do. It's because they don't understand. You know, sometimes we be so into what we think uh, we think we know we don't study we don't sit and ask god to deliver our bad spirits that's in us our hatred that's in us we don't sit and ask for a deliverance from that so we we just be blind we don't know what's going on so you know i have to overlook that but in the midst of all these people treating me weird there was this little girl uh she was a uh, little Caucasian girl and she started talking to me and she, I said hi beautiful and um, she smiled as like I'm beautiful to her too and so later up at the cash register at this particular store I hear her mom who never spoke to me even though her kid was interested in speaking to me and so her mom starts talking about how this little girl has had so many heart surgeries it was a very sick little girl and my heart just knew it was something about this girl you know what I mean so I asked her mom can I talk to the little girl again and I went back and I was with her and we had the most pleasant conversation it was just something that drew us to one another and I just held her hand and prayed and God just let me know my purpose here on earth I'm, I'm a lot of times I've been put out a lot of times oh you're different you you know you you can't be the best friend you can't be the dish you can't do the that but God let me know you are here for a purpose and this is your purpose, to be a woman that can help others. So, you know, it made me feel better. And then the day went on, and I went around people that said, oh, I like your scarf, oh, you're beautiful. You know, and I, so it, just God knew that this is my start of my journey and that I needed some uplifting. So anyway, what are you willing to sacrifice? That's what, I'm, what I was willing to sacrifice worrying about some hair and it really is um it doesn't it really don't matter but it's you know it's big to some so that was my sacrifice so that i can be 
better to society and be a better person, more disciplined in my religion, my religion, my relationship with God, okay? All right, and we're not going to talk a lot about that because religion is debated and people be like, what is she doing? You know, so we're not going to talk a lot about that. Just know that I am doing what I do to be close to God and I am willing to sacrifice especially these little things that's like hair and uh, drinking and smoking and because they really little. People was killing folks for the God they think they believe in. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to end you today with my poem of being delivered from the gates of hell because this poem is what helped me get more disciplined, um, know where I need to go to follow a good path in life. So when you're thinking about Maya Blue, think about sacrifice, but think about sacrificing things from you, not killing somebody, sacrificing things from you, things that when you want to be closer to God, when you, because you want God to deliver, you want God to do the things that God has promised you that he would do for you. Make you uh, prosperous, um, healthy, um, more be loved. You know, get the husband or wife that you desire. Think about what you are willing to sacrifice, okay? So you got mine. Now, as I look back over my life, I'm ashamed of this woman that I represented. From my head to my toe, I was the image of sin. I needed each and every one of you fixated on my outer beauty. And when you didn't look quick enough, I added to me. Now, my purpose of weave was to wear it long enough to make it bounce. And I put on a tight shirt and a tight skirt so my body could look more pronounced. I put long eyelashes on. So when I back them, I could put anyone under a spell. I didn't have a clue that I was living in hell. So, this story is deep. And I hope you allow me to tell my testimony of being delivered from the gates of hell. I stand before you today with tears of joy. As last night, I had a premonition that I would birth a baby boy. For the first time, I felt him moving inside, and I looked down and praised God, this son is mine. Then I woke up, and I was like, my tubes are tied. Can't be pregnant, because me and my mate are following God's timeline. So why am I having these premonitions? Within two weeks, it's the second time. So, let's look back over this dream, of this poem. I started it off with humility. Ashamed of the woman that I used to be. I then went to a dream that I was having a baby boy and felt him moving inside of me. That I now know is a miracle. I have to give birth to this son. I can no longer put on a costume and run. I'm a woman, not seeking one to be lustful. And I don't need material things to make me boastful. I will start a new journey. I will be a righteous woman. A covered woman. A woman that no matter how many times I fail, I can be a testimony to someone to let them know that I was delivered from the gates of hell. So, let's see. In my dream, I was about six months pregnant in the dream. So that means in a few months, I have to give birth to this thing that's as real as a baby boy moving inside of me.